Valve just announced a new version of the Steam Deck that comes with an OLED screen. So we're going to cover all the details about this new release, whether you should upgrade your current Steam Deck or if you're a first time buyer, should you pay a little bit extra for the new OLED sweetness, or could you save a few bucks on some of these V1 versions that are likely going to get a lot cheaper very soon. First off, let's start off by saying this is a new version of the Steam Deck or a Steam Deck 1.5. It is not a Steam Deck 2.0. In fact, you should not expect much if any improvement in performance in the gameplay itself but what you can expect is a much nicer image thanks to that oled screen that is now 7.4 inches versus the 7 on the current steam deck and it increases the refresh rate from 60 hertz all the way up to 90 hertz so for those games that it can deliver a nice high refresh rate on you'll be able to see that much more versatility but a lot of triple a popular games won't be able to go that high anyway. In fact, games like From Software's Elden Ring and some of those other popular titles have a max of 60 FPS anyway, but it's still a very nice thing to have. What's more notable than just that refresh rate though is that the resolution remains unchanged, still having the same exact resolution. So you'll have an improvement in the size of the screen and the refresh of the screen and more importantly, the colors that OLED can provide you to give you a little bit more gameplay immersion and the true colors that it can represent. The display is gonna be brighter. It's gonna now have 600 nit SDR peak brightness up from 400 on the existing Steam Deck. It is also gonna have a larger 50 watt hour battery up from 40 watt hours and a more efficient version of the AMD APU. In addition to that, it's gonna have a larger and quieter fan. One of the things that a lot of Steam Deck owners note when they first start playing it, especially on newer games, is how hot it gets. In fact, the smell that emits from the top vent can be quite intoxicating at times. Many people just sitting there, instead of playing their game, just sniffing the vents. But if that's actually not a feature to you, it's gonna be a little bit cooler and a little bit quieter. So that is a welcome feature. Also gonna be 29 grams lighter. That's really not that big of a difference, but you may notice it. To help with that cooling, there is also gonna be a larger heat sink. So it should be better at dealing with heat all around. It is gonna have louder speakers with improved Base. One millimeter taller thumbsticks for a little bit better for your thumbs there. It is gonna now have Wi-Fi 6 on board, so that could be noticeable for some of those that have a Wi-Fi 6 router at home and play games that are online where you can use that extra tiny bit of speed. It's also gonna be a little bit faster at the charging rate. The new included brick is gonna be able to get you from 20% to 80% charge and as small as 45 minutes. The back is gonna have torque screws instead of Phillips. That's kind of a little bit of a pain if you don't already have that, that driver, but once you get one, it means that those screws should strip a little bit less. And they're also gonna redesign some of the component layout so that some of those easier repairs will be able to do without assembling as much. The shoulder buttons are gonna be beefier and more shock resistant. I think a lot of people, if you ever drop the Steam Deck, you realize how tough it is and it doesn't mess itself up. But these buttons, if you push them too far, can actually cause them to get really spongy and gummy. In fact, I had to replace one with something that I got for I fix it and it was fine after. In fact, you can even replace the display without having to remove the back at all on the new OLED version. The new OLED versions are gonna come in at $550 for a 512 gigabyte version and $650 for a one terabyte version. This actually reduces the pricing down the former two large models so for the same price, you end up getting double the storage. Not bad. It's also gonna have a new carrying case with a smaller inner shell, and you can actually get a custom from the factory clear edition for $679. For those that like to have a clear version, you can now buy it straight from Valve without having to do all of the tedious work of hoping you don't destroy your Steam Deck. So that is kind of a bonus, and it's only gonna cost you about 30 bucks. Hey, why not? Now here are some things that are not going to change. It's gonna have the same processor specs. So again, we're not gonna have any increased gaming performance per se. 
the same M2 storage that are gonna have the 2230 micro drive size. So you're not gonna be able to use a full size SSD. It's gonna be the tiny ones that cost just a tad bit more, but that's not really that big of a deal. Now the prices are so cheap on those, you can get a one terabyte for as low as 65 to 85 bucks right now. The overall outer shape should be the same so that all the existing cases will still fit. The same 1280 by 800 screen resolution. So you're not gonna be able to get an upgrade in that performance or the resolution it's only the size and the color and the refresh rate all the same game compatibility that's unsurprising given that the performance is unchanged so this is really much more of an incremental update if you already have a steam deck I don't know that you really need to upgrade it in fact if I had 550 or 600 bucks I would probably add to my collection something like the ROG Ally or the Legion Go because those are actually going to deliver you greater performance. Now on games that the Steam Deck can play well, which is quite a bit, the gaming OS experience is much more console-like and easier to play on the Steam Deck than those Windows-based devices which require all manner of incessant updates to keep them working, which is annoying. But you can't dispute the power that that Z1 Extreme processor can deliver on those generation devices, and you're not gonna get that in upgrading to a fancier OLED screen. I think for the vast majority of people, a Steam Deck is still a great introduction to portable PC gaming, or if you've always been a console person, it's a lot cheaper to buy one of these than a full-fledged gaming PC. Even though you're not gonna get the same performance, do you really need it for a lot of those games? I played nearly 300 hours of AAA title Elden Ring on this thing without a hitch. I've played Modern Warfare 2 online and gotten a pretty good KD ratio by installing Windows onto the SD card slot. Speaking of, the SD card slot is still going to be in the same place in the new OLED version. Now, if you don't own a Steam Deck and you have a budget of $550, it's going to be an easy no-brainer to go help and get that OLED version. Now, what can you expect if you don't have a Steam Deck at all? The pricing on these original versions is gonna fall even further. Right now, you can get a GameStop refurbished unit of the 64 gigabyte model, the smallest storage, for as little as 320 bucks. Add together a one terabyte SSD in there that you can replace with just a few screws, and then boom, you have an under $400 gaming machine those prices may drop even further so you may be seeing prices as low as 250 dollars on those very soon once these come out now the release date of this oled version is going to be november 16th so it's right around the corner but you'll have to check on the valve website whether it's going to be available in your country on that date or if you're gonna to have to wait just a little bit longer what are your gaming things in the comments? Now, if you're curious about the gaming potential of a Steam Deck, I was a gamer many years ago, but in the last several years, I've taken up another hobby, which is drain which is drone racing, and that's taken up all of my time. I didn't think I would ever game again, even though I edit my other drone racing channel on an Alienware gaming laptop. I really didn't game on it that much just because I didn't really have the time. Most of the free time I had was in bed, and I didn't feel like going to my office to sit in another few hours on the same chair that I've sat in for 10 hours working all day. But the Steam Deck, while it didn't have the same amount of power, allowed me to play that 30 minutes to an hour that you have laying in bed that you might just otherwise be scrolling on your phone and get some actual gaming in. The new Spider-Man for PlayStation that I was never able to play because I could never get my hands on a PlayStation 5, God of War for PC, Elden Ring. I loved Elden Ring so much that I went ahead and bought and spent almost 100 hours on Dark Souls 3 and I have a whole slew of other games already purchased. I'm gonna go back through Skyrim because I never beat it on my Xbox One. I'm gonna go, and the reason I was able to get that game, because on a Steam sale, it was only $8. I got three of the Batman Arkham games that I hadn't made it through. I got all three of them on sale for $9. Not $9 a piece, $9 for all three. So do you get why it's so attractive to be able to take advantage of that Steam store and game on the go 
I spent a good bit of time taking care of a family member in a hospital, almost a total of about 30 days that I slept on a little tiny hospital bed. This really got me through some of those hours. Regardless of which Steam Deck you're thinking about going with, now's the time to get one. Just debate, do you have $350 to $400 to spend, or do you have $550 to spend? And that's your answer on which Steam Deck you should get. Thanks guys.